Part 4. Resting on the Point of a Star One Gold Lame Sandal When I wake up on Wednesday, December 21st, I am happy that this year is practically over and that it's almost time to tear off the last month of the calendar. It is also the day I am seeing Dr. Freely, and I am hoping he will finally remove my cast, but I am scared too. I have gotten used to my cast holding me together, and I am afraid I might fall apart when it comes off. It's been so long that it feels like I may never walk again. I am resting on the point of a star, far from everything I knew how to do before I broke my leg. Sometimes I wish I could shout to the world, Tell me, please! Won't you tell me? Do you know how to become whole after you've been broken? Mommy is going with me to the hospital, all dressed up as usual, with no one to admire her and tell her how pretty she is, except me. I'm expecting Bobby and Clay to come for me, but two other men arrive. They don't tell me their names, and I don't ask. I'm only outside for a few minutes. It's freezing, and that makes me want to be back in my cozy bed. I feel sorry for the bare trees that have lost their leaves and are waiting for spring to bring them back. Then I notice their branches are as fine as lace. I remember what Chico taught me about perspective, and all of a sudden, the winter seems beautiful to me. A time of hibernation and waiting, just like I've been hibernating and waiting. Dr. Friedlich is amused when he sees my painted cast. Sure you want me to take this off, he asks. My neighbor Chico took a picture with his Polaroid camera, I tell him. Oh, good. He cuts and I watch, happy and sad, as flowers, butterflies, and birds fall to the floor. After they take the x-ray, Dr. Friedlich stares at it for a long time trying not to sound worried, but looking worried. He says, it's healing, but not as quickly as we'd like. Hmm, let's not take any chances. I'm going to put a cast just on your right leg. Your left leg will be free, but I can't give you a walking cast yet. You'll still have to stay in bed, maybe two months if we're lucky. I watch as he creates a new cast for my right leg that goes from my toes to the top of my thigh. Here, Ruthie, sit up, Dr. Friedlich says, very slowly. Your muscles have gone to sleep, so you need to go easy on them. My belly is free and my back is free for the first time in so long. I thought I would be so happy when my body cast was off, but instead I feel like a turtle that's lost half of her shell. I inch forward at my belly, pulling my back up, trying to sit. It takes all my strength. Dr. Friedlich holds me so I won't fall over. I look down toward my legs, one out of the cast and one still in the cast. I don't recognize my left leg, my good leg. It's all furry. Why am I so hairy? I ask Dr. Friedlich. He smiles. It's a result of all your body heat trapped inside the cast. And you're growing up. As fast as I feared. Good thing I put you in that body cast. I'm not sure what the hair sprouting on my leg and me growing up have to do with each other, but I nod as if I know. You can move the left leg all you want. Remember, it's not broken. Just been sealed up for a while. The muscles will take a little time to reawaken, but they will. And you'll be tempted to get out of bed. Don't even think of trying to stand up. You're not ready. Is that clear, young lady? He looks me straight in the eye to be sure I've understood. Okay, doctor. I don't know what Dr. Friedlich is talking about. I've forgotten how to stand up. Aunt Sylvia is peering out her window when the ambulance pulls up to our building as the men carry my stretcher out of the ambulance. Izzy comes running to meet me along with Dennis and Lily, and Aunt Sylvia follows. They crowd around. I don't have a body cast anymore, I tell everyone, but I have to learn how to sit up again like a big baby. Isn't that ridiculous? Yippee! Izzy shouts. You're almost back to normal. He and Dennis and Lily jump up and down. So can she walk now? Aunt Sylvia asks quietly, turning to Mommy. Mommy's voice is sad as she says to Aunt Sylvia. Dolavia, that means not yet. Aunt Sylvia replies, Hasta cuando? That means, until when? Mommy shrugs, icy tears in her eyes. I'm sure they're not for me. They're for her. 
She has to keep being my mother, keep taking care of me, the daughter who's got a hairy leg and another leg that might never heal. After we get back upstairs, the glum ambulance men drop me in my bed like a sack of potatoes. Mommy leaves the room and I hear her weeping in the kitchen. I call to her, come back, Mommy, don't cry by yourself, but she won't listen. Will our lives go on like this forever, me always in bed and Mommy trapped in the house with me? No, no, no. I can't let that happen. I have to get better. I'm going to start right now by moving my left toes. As Dr. Friedlich said, my left leg isn't broken. It's just fallen asleep after being in the cast for so long. The toes are stiff, but after a while, I can move them. Very slowly, I start to move my foot. Twirl my ankle. It feels like I'm lifting a brick, but the leg is coming back to life. Mommy, look, Mommy! Finally, Mommy returns, her tears all dry, and she brings me an apple cut into neat wedges. Here, mi niña, you need something to eat. I'm sorry you had to wait. Mommy, I'm going to get better. Please don't give up on me. Look, I can move my left foot again. Ay, mi vida, be careful. It's okay, Mommy, really. The doctor said I can move it all I want. But be careful, it's been in a cast for a long time. I will, Mommy, don't worry. The sadness in Mommy's eyes makes me sad, but then I think of a great idea. Mommy, please let me wear one of your shoes on my left foot just to see how it feels. At last, Mommy smiles a true smile. Of course, me niña, of course. She rushes to the hallway closet and comes back with a bunch of her high heels and lets me choose any I want. I select her gold lame sandals, which have a thick platform sole and an ankle strap. Mommy, put it on my left foot, please. My belly and back are stiff and achy, so I can't reach down yet to my foot. Now you put the other sandal on, I tell Mommy. Why? she asks. For fun, I say. She slips the sandal onto her right foot and stands on one foot. She hops around before losing her balance and catching hold of the edge of the bed not to fall down. It's not easy to walk on one foot, Mommy says. Mommy, stay with me, I tell her. See me, Nino, she replies. She comes and stretches out beside me on the bed. With one gold lame sandal on my left foot and one gold lame sandal on Mommy's right foot, we're a complete person. Dear Frida, I don't dare tell Mommy or Joy that I'm not sure if I ever want to get out of bed. I can't say that out loud. They'll think I'm crazy. I hope I'm not. Did you ever feel this way, Frida? That a part of you wants to be healed and return to normal, and another part wants to stay just as you are, quietly in bed, painting your pictures, safe from all the mean people in the world? Please give me a sign, Frida, if you understand me. I really hope I'm not crazy. Ruthie.